Right. This is the finished project of the flasher. Uh, this one's been built on a particularly small bit of Vero board. It didn't need to be built quite as small as that, but however it's very impressive that it has been done so small. The flash rate appears to be about two flashes per second. Going across to the prototype on the breadboard, you can see here I've got many loose components, the two large timing capacitors, um, some 39K resistors here and here, coming back to the bases, the LEDs, and then I've got two oscilloscope probes connected to this, and I've taken those across to the oscilloscope just to get a bit of an idea of what's happening in the circuit. This yellow trace is connected to the base on one of the transistors and this blue trace is connected to the collector on the opposite transistor and when the collector voltage on the opposite transistor falls from 9 volts down to zero, note we're on about 5 volts per division here, 9 volts down to zero or very close to zero the charge which was sitting on the capacitor, that is 9 volts of charge, that charge is forced across into the base on the op opposite base. Now, on the oscilloscope I've got DC coupling on channel 2, the blue trace, with zero reference voltage on the baseline of the oscilloscope screen. Channel 1, I've got zero voltage with DC coupling again connected here to the middle of the screen. So you can see the base on this particular transistor is going from about 0.6 of a volt and dropping down minus 9 volts and that's because the charge that was in the capacitor which was tied between that base and the collector on the opposite transistor when the transistor switched down to zero that charge had to go somewhere and it's resulted in a negative 9 volts approximately across on the base of the opposite transistor and that capacitor slowly charges again from minus 9 volts back up to positive 0.6 of a volt and when it gets to positive 0.6 of a volt it results in switching the transistor back on again and you can see here as soon as that was in the negative area, the transistor was turned off and when we come back positive again, the transistor switches back on. So we have to just think about one thing here, that is the collector on the opposite transistor to what I'm measuring the base voltage here. So, uh, got to think about that. When this transistor goes to positive 0.6, that particular transistor's collector is going to drop down to zero volts. This is the opposite transistor, so if I had a four trace oscilloscope here, I'd be able to show that transistor one has turned off, so its collector voltage has gone high, and transistor two, if we call it that, which is that's the base on Q2, its waveform would have gone low. Now if I just quickly move the oscilloscope probe from the collector on Q1 and put it across onto the collector of Q2, there it is there now, and now we look at these waveforms again, we can see that as the capacitor charged up over that one time constant, then we had that transistor turning back on, which results, and this is Q2 base, this is Q2 collector, Q2 collector drops because Q2 has turned on. And when that turned on, that would have charge coupled that 9 volts into the base of Q1. So we've got perfect symmetry here happening between um, transistor 1 and transistor 2. Quite important to understand about the capacitor and the charge on the capacitor and how it's charge coupled from the collector into the base on the opposite device, the opposite transistor. So transistor Q2 and transistor Q1. And that's it, that's our multi-vibrator. And good job Phil with your tiny little multi-vibrator board here. Really nice, neat work indeed.